Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Prasad. I'm going to walk through the uh, Contrail networking architecture. Contrail uh, uh, supports uh, both Kubernetes orchestrator as well as uh, OpenStack orchestrators. And uh, when we have the Kubernetes orchestrator, we support containers as well as uh, virtual machines via KubeWord, as, my, uh, as Nick mentioned earlier. And also for container workloads, if we need additional security, we support through the Kata containers are equivalent. So, and uh, for OpenStack uh, workloads, like you know, primarily virtual machines, that also we support. And Contrail networking, when it is supporting, we have multiple options to do the data forwarding using the kernel loadable modules or DPDK, SRIOV, and uh, SmartNICs. In whole, we support both uh, orchestrators, Kubernetes, as well as uh, OpenStack. And Contrail is an uh, SDN platform, consists of uh, three planes, config plane, control plane, as well as the data plane. Config plane consists of multiple uh, config nodes, and they are highly available by 2N plus one uh, uh, you know, config nodes. And uh, similarly, control nodes are also highly available and config plane uh, config nodes takes the rest configuration from the orchestrators or ui and uh, stores this configuration at the hcd uh, data uh, data store key value data store and it forms a graph and all this configuration is for, uh, forms a graph at the control node and it is replicated at all the other control nodes and as needed, only the relevant partial graphs will be sent towards to the compute nodes instead of sending the whole graph to uh, the compute nodes. So it becomes like you know highly efficient. If you have thousands of uh, network policies or thousands of virtual networks, only the relevant uh, configuration will be propagated down. For the routing, so we use the BZP uh, to communicate the uh, routes uh, across the uh, nodes. And as all this componentry is uh, is going to generate the telemetry towards to the telemetry node, and Contrail supports multi-tenancy, multi-cluster support, and with IAM and row roll rollbacks, or sorry, RBACs, and intent-based networking and security. And also we support in insights for uh, Contrail networking as well as the security po uh, security policies. I have a question. Uh, it's Enrico here. Uh, in the previous slide, you mentioned that you need uh, you can work on SmartNICs and you use the PDK, but does it mean that you need a, a SmartNIC, so a piece of hardware, to make your solution work, or can you work also on Kubernetes in the public cloud? Yeah, so we can work in the uh, Kubernetes public cloud also. So uh, when we have the data plane. Um, you know, we can have the kernel loadable module or DPDK or SmartNICs. Mm -hmm. So public load, uh, you know, we can uh, uh, we can work as a CNI. Uh, so so that is also uh, one option. Or we could have the uh, EC2 instances running as a compute nodes. That would be another option. Does it create any limitation or performance issue? So yeah, that's a good question. See, when uh, based on the use cases we would be using the kernel loadable modules or DPDK. Mm -hmm. So let's take the cases like, you know, if you have a 5 use cases where we are running like, you know, CU, DU, that kind of workloads, and which requires a lot of uh, throughput and performance, then we use the DPDK. So, so that like, you know, the cores are reserved and, you know, it is doing the processing. Mm -hmm. But certain cases like, you know, uh, user wanted to reserve all these cores towards to the workloads and in those cases like you know we wanted to support through the smart nicks but this when we do the smart nicks you know it comes with the cost you know hence like you know we have the varied options so so let me go to the uh, a little bit uh, deep dive into the uh, contrail config so contrail conf uh, config uh, is uh, based on the kubernetes uh, uh, you know api aggregation api server so which basically we are extending the existing API server uh, with our uh, custom API server. 
in a way, whatever the configuration intents which we are configuring will be will 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 be called as a custom resources through the aggregation API server technique. So those will be handed over to the custom API server. So these custom API servers is nothing but another instance of the Kubernetes API server. And these custom API servers, uh, uh, you know, custom resources will be managed uh, through the control loops using the custom controllers, which is uh, similar to like, you know, how the Kubernetes uh, uh, does its, uh, you know, native resources like, you know, parts or like, you know, nodes or deployments and replica sets. Similarly, like, you know, all our uh, custom resources will be managed through custom API server and custom controller. And uh, this configuration will be watched by the control load and forms the graph and sends it towards to the uh, data plane. And all these component tree will be generating the telemetry, uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier. So this is the uh, configuration. Now, the next step is like, you know, we have a, a data path as well as the uh, control uh, node. So, so here the data path uh, evolution is like, you know, as uh, uh, you know, as you asked, like, you know, there are multiple options, kernel loadable module, DPDK, smart mix. In a given uh, Kubernetes cluster, we can have a mixed uh, variation of things based on the uh, locality or based on the need. And uh, the control uh, is uh, run through the, uh, uh, same channel through via the control load, and uh, these routes are exchanged using the BGP. So at high level, you know, we have a controller, which is the config ng and control load. And uh, config ng is uh, for the co configuration, control is for the routing. And whereas the compute nodes, like, you know, that's where all the uh, data path the forwarding happens using the agent and V router. And we have a web UI to visualize uh, these uh, uh, constructs. And also we send this uh, data towards to the telemetry engine, which has the API server and uh, collector and send this information towards to the sinks, telemetry sinks, Prometheus, Elastic and you know, Floaty SDB. So far what we covered is like, you know, uh, how the control SDN consists of like, you know, three different planes, config, control and data plane and uh, the Componentry of each of them. So now I'd I would like to walk through few operational models Contrail uh, works on. So one mode is like you know as it's a single cluster, and uh, which is uh, integrated with the Kubernetes cluster. And the second mode is like you know this uh, a Contrail cluster is going to manage few Kubernetes clusters. So that's another mode. And the third mode, which we are going to support is uh, multiple cocktail clusters are managed through the uh, KubeFed or uh, uh, another uh, cocktail controller. KubeFed here is used for the config federation. So KubeFed also like, you know, which is one of the um, uh, Kubernetes uh, ecosystem provided uh, uh, Kubernetes uh, config federation. And also we support uh, the networking federation my colleague is going to walk through how that network federation happens. And um, so the other area is we support IAM and rollback and uh, multi-tenancy. So in a nutshell, like, you know, we can uh, support a single uni unified cluster or multiple Kubernetes clusters. Or if we have like, you know, different uh, use cases where we have to have multiple uh, CA2 clusters and they can be federated using the QFED. I, I want to get down to a more fundamental or maybe high level question, which is what is this replacing in my existing Kubernetes deployments? Am I using this as a replacement for my container networking like Flannel or Calico? Am I using this to replace my application gateways and ingress gateways? Is this gonna function as a load balancer? I'm just curious, what are the use cases and what am I replacing in my Kubernetes cluster? So the, the fundamental purpose of Contrail is to provide a CNI. So it's going to give you the ability to deliver pod and service networking like a Flannel or a Calico. Um, Contrail 
goes a little bit further um, in we also support the the set of load balancer and service objects required to expose the the applications themselves so contra will natively implement load balancer objects and advertise the external ip addresses out of the cluster for reachability um, it, we're not replacing the ingress controllers or, or any of the L7 load balancers. Those still run on top of Contrail, and they use the, the load balancer infrastructure to expose uh, the front end of the, the service mesh or the, the load balancer um, to the external network. Okay, so we're really focused at, at a lower layer here. We're not, yeah. we're not worried about L7 at this point. L3, L4, yeah. So that's basically what, what Contra is going to give you is uh, everything around layer three, layer four is provided by Contra. Okay, thank you. Kind of building off what you just said. So if I'm doing this on prem, I can get rid of things like metal LB and things like that. Contra will take care of that that load balancing. Is that what I heard? Yeah, exactly. And very okay. very similarly, we we advertise the external IPs out of the nodes using BGP. So whatever whatever router or switch you've got in the data center, they'll learn those external IPs from the nodes themselves. So you get uh, kind of optimal routing to the endpoints. Baseline here is that you don't need necessarily an external load balancer anymore. And also, we support the application based firewalling, which is uh, the L three and L four. Mm -hmm. 